We're now in the position where the rear of that cutter is in line with the centre line of the job. I'm now going to diverge slightly from normal wheel cutting practice because normally if you're just cutting a conventional wheel you'd start feeding in and eyeing your cutter depth and getting the right tooth form. Here I know that I want a very specific depth of cut and I want an offset forwards of that cut. So what I need to do before doing anything else is to make sure that this cutter is just touching the top of the job before I establish any other movements of the work head. You can do that several ways. I've already marked the job up. Now you could just set the machine going slowly and bring the workpiece up until you see a tiny line appear in your marker. And that would be, to all intents and purposes, close enough to mark the top of the job. I know from past experience I'm going to struggle to see that in that situation. You could use a feeler gauge, but these are really sharp, quite delicate cutters. I'm slightly loath to bring it in contact with steel because it only ever works on brass. So what I'm going to do, searching for it, is I'm going to use a cigarette paper. And again, there's approaches you can use with this. It's very old school and I know some people frown on it slightly, but it does still work. Um, you can just wet those lay it onto the job, have the cutter rotating under power, or you can do it by hand if you want, and just wait till it moves it. Great for a lot of cutters, but I do know that these really sharp cutters will sometimes just nick into the paper without actually moving it. So in this instance, what I've done is I've just set the cutter up so that the leading edge of that tooth is disposed vertically, and brought it close to by eye, and then I'm just going to feed this in between the job and the cutter. And I'm just going to bring the workpiece up very gently, just feeling whether I've still got clearance or not. So bear with me. You may not be able to see the movement, but it is, yeah, there we are. That's just touching the job. So what I'll do now is I'll zero the dial at that position. Do a quick double take, wipe my fingers because they're covered in oil. And just do it again as a confidence check. So coming close by eye. Right, getting towards actually having to concentrate. That's just tugging and I'm spot on my zero. So I'm happy with that now. So from there, I need to bring the cutter forward for my offset. And because I can never remember anything, I need to come forward by seven millimeters, which is 0.2755 of an inch. Swiss machine, but it's imperial. So I'm gonna to work to the 0.2755. I've already set a stop where that head is in the zero position, again, as a sort of confidence check. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing the machine around because I can't see that dial. And if I can't, then the camera certainly can't. What you will not be able to see, because I can only just see it, is the fiduciary line there. It's really tiny and obviously it's on the top. So you'll have to just trust me. But what I'm gonna do is move that forward 0.2755. Every complete revolution is 0.1 of an inch or 100 thou. So there's our 100 mark coming up. That's one. Two hundred. And just watch the numbers come round. There's the seven. So one seven, further five. You bear with me now because I can't see that. A torch and an eyeglass. That's five, and then I want a further half of a thousandth of an inch. Bring that. Right, that's spot on. Quick confidence check. Again, 
power gauge blocks which is 0.17 and 0.105 so 0.275 not allowing for the half a thou but it is only a confidence check so just ring those together check it my stop and that's a good sliding fit so i'm happy with that i know i'm in the right place when i finish filming i'll lock that off and before cutting obviously having robbed the uh, stop from the far side i've now got to gently uh, traverse the work out of the way without hitting anything so I don't want to run into this cutter because I'm setting the depth of cut ready for a, a full cut in one go. So now I need to raise the table 0 0.270 as I said, 50 thou a turn, so five turns and an additional 20 thou. and then an additional 20,000, then 20,000, oops, gone too far, so drop the back bash. Twenty thousand. I set the cutter height originally, bring the, the workpiece up towards the cutter, so I didn't have to account for backlash because I was still going to be moving in the same direction. But when I made a mistake, obviously I've got to go beyond my backlash point and then back up again. So I've got an accurate reading. So I'd set that stop at zero. So I want to do my little uh, confidence check. So 0 0.140 and 0 0.150 gauge blocks. Just ring those together. There we are, so that's going to be accurate. And that's just the sliding fit. Yeah, so I can slide into that. So I'm happy with that depth of cut. I'll go along, lock the, the work head off, lock the table off, restore my stop to the traverse of the working head um, to make sure that I don't run cutters in and I'll come back when I'm ready to cut. I've talked quite a bit about centering cutters and um, offsetting the cutter afterwards and a particular depth of cut. And this is a cardboard representation of what it is I'm trying to achieve. So if you've already worked all this out, just skip forward to the next bit, which isn't all bits of cardboard and paper. This is a representation of my 38 millimeter diameter workpiece or ratchet blank. And so the crucial thing is it's a 19 millimeter radius workpiece and I want the gap between the teeth that I'm going to cut out to go down to a depth of five millimeters. Hence this smaller circumference in here that represents the bottom of the tooth cut. What I've got. Oh, yeah. And I want that to be 60 degrees between the two flanks. And I'm sure there's cutters that do that with the cutter on the centre line, but I haven't got one. What I've got is a ratchet wheel cutter for clock ratchet wheels. And so if that cutter's on the centre line, as you can see, it's not going to cut out what I want. But if I could tilt the head back, then it would give exactly what I want. Now, I can't do that on the milling machine. So if I notionally rotate the job 30 degrees, I'm not actually going to rotate it because it'll become apparent why. Now, assume I've got that in the right place. If you can imagine the cutter going forwards, that face now is just right for cutting that tooth. All well and good, except that I can't just instantly think, oh, well, I want to go that far forward and that much, and that'll give just what I want. So if I imagine my cutter's there, 
take the workpiece out of the way for the moment. What I've got is 30 degrees off of the vertical, which is now going to give my rear of the cutter arriving there. The tip will be down to 0.5 millimetres below that, and I'll be happy. But how do I get there? Well, I've got to go forward a set amount and down a set amount. So we'll deal with the forward first. I know that I've gone 30 degrees forward. So, and you'll find this in Machinery's Handbook or Zeus Tables. They've all got helpful little uh, triangle solution tables and the sign, no, it's not that page. There we are, natural signs, cosines, tangents, cotangents. So that's really going to be what we're looking at to solve it. I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I'm just going to give you a solution piece by piece. So we want to know what B is. We know that angle of 30 degrees. And because we're going for that to be five millimetres, we know that A is 14 because we've got a radius of 19. I've said I want a depth of cut of five. 5 from 19, 14. So already we're in fairly straightforward territory. So to get that dimension B there, our forward traverse, so we know that the sine of angle B, our 30 degree angle there, is the perpendicular of the triangle over the hypotenuse of the triangle represented by B and A. So multiple, multiply both sides by A. So A times sine B is B. So we've said that A is 14. So 14 times a half, which is, when you look it up in your table, the sine of 30 degrees. That will give you your dimension B. So B is equal to 14 times 0.5. So a 7 millimetre depth of cut which if you multiply, uh, sorry, divide it by 25.4 is 0.2755 of an inch, which is what I'll be using because my machine is Imperial. So that gives that forward offset. We also need to know how much to bring the cutter down to get the tip of the cutter in there to give our five millimeter depth of cut from the surface of the material. I don't fancy trying to work that out by getting the top of the cutter when it was on the centre line absolutely on that circumference, all I want to know is how deep to go from there. So once I've done my traverse, come down by that amount D, and because that's perpendicular, that's where the point of my cutter will end up. So we need to know what dimension C for the base of the triangle is. So that is the cotangent of that angle B of 30 degrees. So the cotangent B is C over B. So again, multiplying up by the one underneath your uh, fraction, B times cotan B is equal to C. So C there is B times the cotangent of B, which means that when you look it up in your table, you get a substitute value of 1.7320. So C is 7, which we've got from measuring B there, times the cotangent of 30 degrees. So C is 7 times the cotangent of 30 degrees, which is equal to 7 times 1.7320, which gives 12.124 millimetres, or by dividing by 25.4, the equivalent to, of 0.4775 inches. So we now know what C is. Well, we already know that this total dimension is 19. So to arrive at D, all we have to do is subtract C from 19. So C was 12.124, knock that off of 19, and you get 6.876 millimetres. Again, divide by 25.4, 
and you get 0.2705 inches. Which, long-winded way of saying, from the position that we got the cutter in on after all our centering and height adjustment, so we go forward by seven millimeters and down by 6.876 millimeters. And we will end up cutting out a tooth shape, which is exactly what we want.